Hello and welcome to this Cavco Maker tutorial. I'm Roger Webb. This tutorial is probably for first timers and hobbyists. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put this Cavco Maker sign together and do uh, a machining strategy and uh, machine it out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll start from the beginning. And, you know, you can set up whatever measurements you want. I work in uh, millimeters. Now, I always uh, put the resolution up as far as it will go. I'm using a fairly uh, new Windows 10 laptop. So, uh, you know, it works pretty fast. So this is the right uh, measurements uh, that I require. Um, the zero zero or start of the program you can select anywhere in each corner that you want or the center normally cnc routers would start in the bottom left hand corner cnc miller machines would start in the back left hand corner it's just the the norm so we're using a cnc router so we're going to press ok Okay, so now to, di to distinguish between the 3D window or view and the 2D and to switch between the two, it's very easy. There's two tabs up here. Uh, that's the 2D window. That's the 3D window. Well, we're going to use the 2D window um, because the whole job is a what is commonly known as a 2.5D carving. So we're going to select a rectangle drawing tool and you notice that the cross turns to a target or the cursor cross then turns, turns to a target. That's telling me that, or Kafka is telling me that, well, I found the extremity of the material in the corner. So you... What I'm going to do is left click, hold down, and draw down. Seeing it changes to a target again and release. And it's you can tell that it's, um, it's the exact measurements that we want. Now you can do a couple of things here. You, now if I wanted rounded corners, I could set a measurement in here of, for example, 10 millimeters. And it will either invert the corners like this or round the corners like that. You see what I did? I just checked that box and it changes from invert to rounded corners. Okay, just thought I'd show you that. Now I want to set this back to zero because I don't want any rounded corners for this. And we can create, and we're happy with that. We can come out of that. Now the next thing I want to quickly do is give this a bit of a border, just a straight uh, border. Now to do that we're going to draw another rectangle inside of this one. Well there's a tool that we can use which is called an offset tool. So we're going to select that. We already have our uh, vector, you know, any line or mark that's on the screen is called a vector. Uh, in this case, it's a rectangle. Now, let me see. Well, we're going to try five millimeters. It's not set in concrete quite yet. So, am I going to? You can either do it inwards or outwards. Um, and you can, you know, whatever checkbox here. You know, if I wanted to delete this one but uh, you know sort of make the uh, offset one just keep the offset one in other words and delete the outer one I could do that by checking these boxes but I want to keep the the vector that we already have offset um, it's probably a little too thick so we're going to undo that 
So if you want to undo something, you notice what I just did? We'll go back. So it's offset. Not happy with that. It's a little bit too much. So to undo anything, you can just go up here and press undo. And, you know, it will undo as many things as you require. It'll sort of go back through the stages that you've already um, done so far. Let's go to four millimeters here. You know, a lot of this sort of sign work is uh, what is pleasing to the eye. I think that's better. I'm going to keep that. So I can cross out of that. And what I actually did then to deselect that, I just went onto this gray area and just left clicked. So I want to be a little bit precise in putting the lettering in here. I want it, you know, sort of square into the middle. Now to assist you, you can turn on the rulers. Now to do that, come up to view, come all the way down to here, and it says show rulers. Check that. And the rulers appear. Up here. Now there's another little thing that you can do to be exact and help you, you know, with this CAD part of the program is if you come slightly off the gray screen here left click a line will appear and you can drag it down and we're going to bring it down to oh let me see about 18 millimeters there you go and we're going to get another one bring it down Again, another 18 millimeters from the top. So I'm going to put our lettering in between there. Now then, the lettering. Um, in curve code, you can use any lettering that or text that you have in your program or your computer in, in Windows. It will, you know, some of the text you may have to um, should we say repair uh, you, um, but you'll find that as you get more experience with it some of the, the some of the lines or you know that have been drawn to make the text um, Kafka within the Kafka program so it doesn't you know some of the lines don't quite meet so you will have to go in and repair those but you'll learn all that uh, yourself or in further videos from me. Um, oh, this is the text I normally use actually, but uh, you know you can go into here and choose anything that, that you really want. Some of this old English writing, uh, that's the sort of text that I'm talking about that you may have to repair. Um, and we'll, that, that's a whole subject on its uh, on its own so you know like I say any of the text but you know good text to use as well is Times Roman that's pretty good but um, we're, we're happy with this one this is the one I want to use and what did I do then oh we can come out of that and go back in I touched on the, I actually clicked on the screen what I shouldn't have, and uh, it started to do a letter up here somewhere. Now I just want to zoom out a little bit. I've got this set on 60 millimeters. This is just a rough guesstimate, we'll call it. But uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here. I'm going to put the letter in, and we're just going to write. Maker, um, that looks a pretty good size actually. I'm going to keep that. So, create. Um, now I'll show you a little, another little trick at the moment. If you deselect, go on one letter. They they're selected all as one, but what you can do 
if you require, you can go into here, there, and deselect, and actually select each letter individually. It, it, you know, sometimes you need to do that to replace a, a letter slightly um, sort of offline of what it was, was written. There are occasions you want to do that. So to now gather these up, you press your shift button and press each letter individually like so. And then regather them up and group. Okay, so they're all grouped as one again. Now, what I normally do to position these, rather than drag and drop them down, I use the arrow keys on my computer. Very easy to do, like so. And you we'll zoom in a little. So to move this now, all you can do is come onto the uh, your your material, press both left and right mouse button, and hold them down, and you can move it across to get it nice and square into the screen. Now I want to make this slightly bigger so I'm going to go now to the transform tool and it gives me some handles now that I can stretch this so just left click and stretch this a little I want the M to just touch the top there I know the K is going to go slightly out over that's fine and just stretch this down slightly like that that is pretty perfect. I'm happy with that. So we can come out of that. Deselect. That's fine. Now it comes to the machining. So somehow I have lost the border. So we're going to redraw the border very simply and quickly. Remember that the cursor will change and snap to that corner, draw it over, release, create, we can get rid of that, that's already selected. Capcom Maker is very, Capcom Maker is very forgiving, you know, you you know, you can't really mess up too badly with it. And offset inwards, and there it is. So we're, we're back. Got it back. So there's no set sequence, that, you know, to do in this. You, you sort of, you know, do it how you are comfortable. You know, the sequence that you actually draw these, you know, is your own... What makes you comfortable? There's no set pattern of drawing. So we can come out of that. So we basically have our sign made, in as in the CAD work. So now we need to machine, we want to machine all this area out to make our letters stand out. We could do this a number of ways. We could either machine the letters themselves uh, inwards we could v-cut them or do them with a, a small end mill but I want the letters proud left proud and I want to machine the background out so what we do first of all we now have finished with these so you just put them back like this so they're out of your way and of course you can turn the measurements on or off at will. There you go. Sometimes, you know, they get annoying. <laughs> so we want to machine the area in between the letters. So what you simply do is you 
select the lettering, press shift and select the inner box. So what you're telling Kavco is you want a machine between these areas. Okay, now a simple strategy for machining and to get to the machining strategies you can either come here or here. They're up in here, 2D, uh, area clearance, that's what we're going to do, but they're also here, down here, whichever way you feel comfortable getting at them. You know, there's no hard and fast rule about it. So area clearance, which is exactly what it says. This area between here, we're going to machine out. Selected vectors. And start depth zero, finish depth. Oh, we're going to go, I think, about four millimeters, which will be fine. We're not worried about a, an allowance or a tolerance of any sort. If you were machining aluminium, you know, you wanted it very accurate, then you would you would fill this area in. So we're going to add a tool. Now we're going to be mach machining wood, so it's better to scroll down through to the wood because the speed and feeds will be slightly different. Now there's quite some quite sharp areas here, and I want to do this in one cut. Um, I could go in with a five mil and machine it most first, then do it with a one and a half millimeter. Um, actually, I think a three millimeter will be will do it fine. I'm not going to complicate matters. I think you know there's going to be a slight radius in here, but I'm really not worried about that. It's not going to be seen that much, and it's got, for this project. It's got to be fine to be do it with one tool. So I'm going to select that tool now. We're going to work on the speed and feeds. Now, this will depend on what machine you have. If you have something, if you have a small machine, something like an XCAV, something of that nature, well, it's not going to machine this very quickly. If you try and push the tool through here um, quickly, uh, it will vibrate and uh, make a, a bit of a mess of it. Uh, you know, a lot of fur in, a lot of chatter, because um, you know it's not um, it's not a, shall we say an industrial machine. Uh, it's basically a you know real hobby machine, Th machines of that nature. So you have to cater your speed and feeds for your machine. Now. I will write this up as if it was um, a hobby machine. So the step over probably the step over will probably be okay. Step down, well, we five four millimeters. I th it will do it in one um, in one application then in one cut, but. It will not do it. Should we say a hobby machine will not do it at uh, 76 millimeters per second? You will get a lot of chatter and a lot of furring. So we have to set the feed rate to a more manageable um, rate. We're going to say 25 or even 20 actually. Uh, this was actually uh, set up for my machine. You know, I, I, as you all know, I have an industrial machine, so it will do 75, 80, or even 100 millimeters a second. Um, okay, so we need to raise this to probably about 20,000 RPM. 
depending on you know what rotor head you have uh, if you have a DeWalt rotor head 20 you'll get 20,000 out of it without any trouble at all uh, you could even go to 20 24,000 if you like but you might start burning you know sort of blackening some of the material when you sort of come into these areas so it's probably leave, probably best to leave it a little um, you know it's not so high 20,000 rpm would be okay at 20 millimeters per second um, just to give you an example 20 millimeters a second is um, well, 19 millimeters is three quarters of an inch, just to give you an example there. Plunge right. Now that's what I normally do. I normally set this at 50% of the feed rate. It works quite well. Um, I don't have a tool changer, and certainly XCAB doesn't have a tool changer either. Now then. The best method for machining this gives the best results, clean results, is an offset raster. Now that will follow the contours of the lettering around, and uh, it you know it gives you less cleaning up. Um, we're going to go outside so what the tool is going to do is going to start on the outside here and move around and work its way in towards the letters uh, and I always use climb milling it always gives a better cut add ramp moves most definitely always use I always use ramp moves because let's chance of busting your tool off um, Machine safe, 12 and a half millimeter. That's half an inch, by the way, or thereabouts. 12.75 12 is half an inch. Just a, a rough guide. Set up material. It's uh, 12, 12 millimeter. Um, material zero, top of the block or top of the material. Always use that. That's fine. Okay, so we better name this now. Um, so it's a one cut. So uh, you know, we're going to title it um, I abbreviate everything. Three millimeter Millimeter in mil and calculate. It does pay to have a fairly fast computer too, because uh, you know it works out pretty, pretty damn quick. I'm working on a Hewlett Packard laptop. I think it's one terabyte, and I think eight, eight gig of RAM. So it works uh, fairly quick. You know, I'm, I'm recording as well using this in the background. Um, and it you know manages uh, Kavco and the recording all at the same time without any glitches. So, uh, which go just goes to show you know you need a fairly fairly good computer to run Kavco. Certainly the main uh, Kavco program. Okay, so post processor. Oh, actually, before we do that, we better, I think, simulate. So we go to the simulate icon here, press that, which takes us to 3D. And, oh, probably a good idea to choose a material. Now, to choose the material you want, come here. And, um, you know, you can have it whatever you want, really. Um, we're going to be doing it in wood. So, light oak horizontal. Apply. What does that look like? 
Now if you want to turn this around, you just get your center scroll, press down, and you can you can move it. Uh, it's a bit too shiny, isn't it? Light oak, so let's give it a darker darker wood. Mahogany, maybe? Horizontal apply. Oh, that's too dark, isn't it? So, oh, I know. Teak. Teak is normally pretty good. Yeah, that's a little better. That looks okay. Uh, depth of color, you can put that in. And it sort of gives you a, a sort of a representation of as, as if you've sort of painted in the back. And it looks okay actually. It really makes it stand out. But you know you can you can sort of toggle these off and on and please yourself actually what you know you want it and play a bit with the material. Um, take vertical. Let's see what that looks like. Oh. Might look a little better. So you can, you know, with all these buttons, you can sort of toggle off and on the tool paths and, uh, you know, have a nice old play around with it. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I think we've played around with that for enough. I've, I've sort of shown you, well, you can choose whatever material you, you want. To get the best representation you want, and you've even got a contrast slider here. If you want to change the um, contrast of the display, okay, post processor. So you come up here to Toolpaths. If you click on that, that will bring up this again, where here you will find uh, the icon for a three and a half inch floppy disk, which is very, very old school. But it's a, I think it's an icon that everybody recognizes. So if you click on that. Now, post-processing. Um, let me see. There's three millimeter. So first of all, we'll... Um, We'll name this um, Oh, I know. Oops. Oops. Make a test one. Okay. I want this to go to my desktop so I can pick it up later on. Now, the post processor within Cavco Maker, there is hundreds of post processors. Okay, different um, machines, different types, but the the one that really works, okay, is these two here. Now, if you have Kavco and your machine set up in inches, this is the one that you would choose. If you are set up in millimeters, this is the one that you would use. If your machine is not listed in that listing, so it's G code millimeters tap. This is basic G code that every machine understands. I've never had a machine that doesn't understand and react perfectly with this code. Okay, 
so save out and it's done it does look okay I quite like that now to move this around I think I've already explained you can now I've got both left and right mouse key pressed down you can move it bodily around if you want to move it in, around in space you just press the center uh, scroll wheel down and you move it around okay so Thank you for joining me today and I hope this has been a help to you. This is the first tutorial of quite a few coming in the near future uh, regarding a Maker, Maker Plus and of course the main program, Kafka. And don't forget below uh, this video, if you just notice then Kafka just automatically saved so you don't lose your project. And don't forget at the end of this video and below this video, above the comment section, there is a CAVCO discount code that you can use to get 5% off all the products. So thank you for joining me. This is Roger Webb and it's bye for now. <music>